Welcome. Welcome to 21 Things You May Not Know About the Indian Act, Virtual Pilgrimage. We're up to number eight in our 21 Things, and the section, we're in a new section in the book called Tightening Control, and it continues to, to go through this theme of the ways in which legislation that was introduced by the Canadian government sought to control and transform or civilize the lives of indigenous peoples from way back in the early late 1800s all the way until today. My name is Reverend John Borthwick and I'm inviting my congregation to journey with me as I read through the book by Bob Joseph, 21 Things You May Not Know About the Indian Act, and am confronted by so many ways in which our country has controlled the lives of indigenous peoples and continues to do so in a variety of different ways. And I hope as you read the book, this will bring some insight into how you engage and understand the challenges and, and, the, and the difficulties that the indigenous community still has today to navigate Canada in a way that's very different from how certainly anyone who looks like me navigates this world. So thank you for joining me. Today we're at number eight, the eighth thing that may, maybe you didn't know about the Indian Act. This time it's prohibited sale of ammunition to Indians. From 1882 to possibly even this day. It's a little difficult to say. Here's a quote from First Prime Minister of Canada, John A. Macdonald, that Bob starts with. This is what he says in 1885. The great aim of our legislation has been to do away with the tribal system and assimilate the Indian people in all respects with the other inhabitants of the Dominion as speedily as they are fit to change. Interesting. So one of the pieces within the Indian Act was this prohibition of the sale of ammunition to the indigenous community. It was essentially the fear that as you exert control over a people, they may decide or feel that they would want to rebel, resist, fight against the controls and the domination that's happening to them. So one way of perhaps trying to stop any sort of difficulty would be to prohibit the sale of ammunition to the indigenous community. Now, one of the things you might want to know about is in 1885, there was something called the Northwest Rebellion, remembering, of course, that the language is always written by the victors. So the Northwest Rebellion, I'd encourage you to look up a little more um, of, of what that looked like and, and how how that occurred and sort of a lot of the story behind that. I'm not going to touch on that today, but something to say about this in particular is in order for that to rebellion to have happened, someone, someone must have sold the indigenous community munitions. Someone always makes a profit from someone else's rebellion, revolt, uprising. There's always someone there. And almost always, almost always, it's someone who looks like me. Anyways, this is a shorter one and a shorter chapter, but it speaks to this idea of in order to, as Johnny McDonald was saying out loud, to assimilate the Indian people, to change them, to drive them into becoming inhabitants of the dominion. Apparently, they weren't inhabitants to begin with. So in order to make them inhab proper inhabitants of the dominion, we needed to prohibit, we needed to control their activities, and the Indian Act was a big part of making all that happen. So for number eight, it's not allowing them to purchase munitions. Thanks for joining me today.